Hi, welcome to another Coding in Blitz Basic. Um, this is the second part on building a platform game map, map editor using a tiled map for our 2D platform game, which hopefully we're going to build during this section of tutorials. Um, I'm be I'll put the first tutorial on building the actual platform game side of this uh, online later tonight. After this one's, uh, after I finish off with this one, so you sh maybe an hour after this one's online, will be the first one to uh, start the game off to actually start using these maps. Uh, for now, uh, in the last tutorial, we did one one layer on the map, which was just literally just some tiles, um, and now I'm going to add in a second layer to it, which is a collision layer, so that in the game we can say what the character can and can't walk on, um, as well as some other um, functions for collision maps which will come in later as we actually uh, get through designing and building the game. So if I show you the level editor as it now stands, I'm just going to run it. You see there I've added a lot more tiles in, I've also changed the background colour. Um, that's just a simple CLS colour command that I just put in at the start of the program. So if I scroll around, you'll see I've just added a few extra tiles into the game to make it look a bit a bit more like a proper game rather than just having one or two tiles which the last one had. Uh, if I press F1 you'll see there's some red tiles here or semi-transparent tiles. Tiles. That's actually the collision map and that's the platforms that the character can walk on. Um, if I just come out of this I'll show you where I've put that in in the code. I'll try and point out all the changes from the code in part one. So I've increased the number of tiles that it loads, so that's when it looks at the tile set bitmap. Here it will load all these tiles here uh, using the load anim image command. So that's all that was. Um, I've got a show coals variable now, which is whether, whether or not to show the collision layer. That comes into play later on. Um, when it goes to open the file, it now sets up a three-dimensional array, whereas before it just had dim map map uh, map x map y. Now I've got map x map y two, which means um, you have a, a cross coordinate, a down coordinate, and then you have two data fields at each cell on the map. So map x map y zero is the tile that's stored there, the picture tile, and then map x map y one is the collision layer value at the moment that's either 0 or 1 when it says when it shows a 1 it will display one of them red tiles when we're displaying the map and that's what it's going to look for in our platform game tutorial which will be the one after this one for um, doing the collision detection for the character so again if the file exists read it in otherwise just initialize the map it's blank same as it was last time so we load the tiles we load a, a red tile for the collision map. That's just a um, just like a dotted red tile, red and black tile. That's all. Uh, obviously, black is see-through, so I can just display that tile, and you get the semi-transparent effect that you see when I run the program. So I start it off. It will display the map. Uh, if call if show call is true, and map. X, Y, 1 is 1, which is the collision map layer. Remember I said that X, Y, 0 is the tile, and which is what you're seeing there, where the tile them. And X, Y, 1 is a collision layer, so if it's 1, then draw the image of that red collision tile on that square. Uh, scrolling around the map, that's fine. That's as it was before. Okay, if the collision map isn't showing, then it draws the image of what the currently selected tile is otherwise it will just show the, show the actual collision tile and that's so that when you click the mouse you can place more collision tiles in to the actual editor if I just run it quickly I'll show you what I mean by that so there I have my normal tile so if I just place normal tiles in they'll show if I press F1 to bring up the collision map I see that they don't have a collision map on them because I only just put them in so I can now place collision map tiles on top of there as well as put some extra ones if I want so that would actually be an invisible platform there in the game like you get in some Mario games or whatever so if I just save that and quit out uh, not much else has changed on the actual code close the map still saves it off that's it obviously when it saves it uh, before it just wrote the tile layer and that was it it now writes the tile layer and then straight away just writes the collision layer and that's the only change on saving it as well as it obviously saving 
xy0 instead of xy and xy1 for the second time round. So the map tile is literally just um, the structure of the map um, file now is just how wide the map is, how high the map is and then a series of numbers for the tiles for the map and then a series of numbers for the collision map. Uh, then closes the file and just ends the program. So that's the only difference I've made to the map editor. Uh, I've had a number of ideas what I can do with the collision map as well as having tiles that you can't move through or tiles you can stand on. Uh, you could also use a collision map for running conveyor belts or having fans that blow you off in different directions and things like that. Um, you get that in some Sonic games uh, as well as Mega Man games, that sort of stuff. Uh, I'll show you what I mean by that, by that later on when, uh, when, when we expand upon this. Uh, next thing to do now is uh, go into the platform game, uh, start writing the actual game itself by loading the map up and then getting characters on screen, just getting running around, getting jumping, getting landing on tiles, uh, basically up to where you saw it when I showed you uh, the game I was working on a few weeks ago. Okay, um, so until then, download the tutorial, well, not the tutorial, so download the code for this for this tutorial. Uh, the normal project uh, file space. I'll put a link to that on the right hand side and let me know what you think and any comments about where I'm going to take it in the future. Uh, I have had a, a couple of emails off people asking me for help with any with some games I've written. Uh, I got an email off someone asking for help on a text adventure game he's writing. Um, yeah, I'm fine to help out with that sort of thing. As long as it's like less than a few hundred lines of code that's fine. I mean I'd say anything up to maybe 200 lines at the most. Uh, I should be able to help out with. Otherwise, it gets into trying to look un into other person into another person's code um, over say a thousand lines of code. And first, I've got to understand the structure of how you've built it. Then I've got to figure out all your functions, and it would just take me hours. Uh, your best bet is just to take out the bit of code that's giving you the problem and send that over to me, um, and then I'll try and get back to you. Okay, I'll see you in the next uh, video. Cheers, bye.